I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And this is a holiday week. So like Thursday, Friday, today is Saturday of Thanksgiving holiday, which means I'm on vacation. It also means I don't have a lot of news from the tech world. Everybody's taking a vacation. All the newsmakers are on vacation. So what are you going to do? There's just not a lot out there. But we'll talk about a few of the things that are out there. Also, even Tech Podcast, by the way, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, just saying, but even Tech Podcast uh, has suspended the GoToMeeting campaign for this week. So even we, we don't even have a commercial. How's that? So... Let's talk about the few things that I do have to talk about, which is that YouTube now has uh, the, HTML, blah, the HTML5 player. Don't try to say player while you're saying HTML5 or your tongue will curl around itself and choke itself. Just saying. YouTube's HTML5 player gets better. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with that. But anyway, YouTube is leaning toward HTML5. And last week, last week, we had a story about uh, a, a, an article about revision three is moving toward HTML5, as is most everyone, because it's just easier to deal with. But YouTube is moving that way as well. As a matter of fact, in your YouTube account, if you go to your preferences, you can set it up to use HTML5 right now and not use the Flash Player. There are certain features that won't work, eh, little things, things that you may not even mind, like advertisements. So anyway, you may want to give it a shot. So I'm just saying that the thing about it is, let me read you some of the things that it says. You can enable annotations, captions, contextual menus, let you copy the embedded code to the video's URL. Uh, YouTube now offers 480p and 1080p options for the WebM videos. That's pretty cool. And there's native full screen support if you use a Firefox nightly build or Chrome's dev channel. Okay? So, good stuff. All right. Now, here's the thing. I'm thinking about moving toward HTML5 myself right here at drbill.tv. So stay tuned. There's changes a coming. Yes, they are. All right, next item. HP is the number two tablet maker. Amazing. Now, the reason this is an odd story is, of course, that Apple is the number one tablet maker with their iPad. Most everybody that you know, is really heavily into tablets, they want iPads. Eh. So they're number one. So number two, you'd think would be, oh, I don't know. I don't know, Asus or, you know, somebody that's making pads or, you know, even ViewSonic. My, my tablet is a ViewSonic. But no, it's HP. Now, HP is the one that got out of the tablet business, which between you and me is why I suspect that their tablet is number two. So many people bought the tablets when they went on a fire sale that that's why that happened so they're number two but they probably don't really care because they're kind of trying to get out of the tablet business anyway the article here says at least for now Hewlett Packard can lay claim to the second <laughs> most powerful tablet manufacturer behind Apple the text here says missed but it should be most. I'll have to correct that. At any rate, too bad it'll be a short-lived reign. Despite all the attention focused on Apple's iPad, other tablet makers have seen some adoption this year. In total, the U.S. tablet market, excluding Apple sales, 
uh, sole sales of more than 1.2 million units and retail revenue of $415 million from January through October, according to a new study from NPD, whoever NPD is. HP stood on top of the non-iPad hill, closely followed by Samsung Electronics. That yeah, makes a little more sense, Samsung. I kind of picture them as being a little more of the uh, higher non-Apple variety. But HP, they got in there and sold a bunch of tablets for 99 bucks when they decided to get out of the business. So there you go. Now... You will note that I don't have a Geek Software of the Week. I actually kind of do. I've got actually several. But I want to wait probably until next week on that. And again, because of the holiday season. Besides, you guys should be going out and enjoying your holiday, not watching the old doctor on a netcast when you could be out frolicking. Frolic, frolic. Just like the little bunnies. Okay, well, weird, but hey. Anyway, go out, frolic, and enjoy in the remaining time you have before you have to go back to work. <laughs> Bummer. Anyway, until next time, the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.